Dilicious cotton is cotton that's been treated to alter the cellulose so that it accepts dye readily. Dyeing it requires less water, less dye stuff, and no chemicals are needed for either the dye bath or the fiber. It dramatically reduces the prep time, especially for dyeing with natural dyes. And if you teach, you can use it to introduce children and other beginners safely, especially if you use liquid dyes. Having said that, there is a mill finish on it that needs to be removed by either washing in hot soapy water or by using a solvent. I find it easier to use the solvent on sliver and the hot soapy water on either yarn or fabric. So I want to show you how easy it is to dye the Dilicious Cotton Sliver. And I'm going to make up a solution. I call this my cheater solution. And I'm going to make up a solution of um, two parts water and one part ethyl alcohol or grain alcohol. I use the Everclear, which is what the herbalists in this region use to extract um, oils, etc. So one part of the Everclear and two parts of water. And that makes a really good solvent. So I'll put, I'll put, um, I have two pieces of sliver here, so they are um, about a yard each. And it takes me about five yards of sliver to make a scarf, so these are much smaller than I would need for, um, you know, a whole project, but they're good for a little sample to do real quickly. So for me, one yard fills a spindle and uh, five spindles full give me a, enough for a scarf. Okay, so you can see that that is pretty much completely saturated there. And cotton is not ready to dye unless it sinks in a bucket of water. So I'm just going to squeeze this out. I'm not squeezing real hard because I don't want to separate it, even though the cotton is stronger, it holds together better when it's wet than um, when it's dry. Whoops, it's not what I meant to do. So here, let's do this again. Okay, and then I'm going to put it in some hot rinse water here to get rid of all of the alcohol and just to make sure that it's it's completely saturated. So you can see that it sinks in there. So again, I'm going to squeeze this out. And it looks like I left a little behind, but that's okay. Now, I'm going to do some space dye. So I'm going to put this in this ice cube tray that has just a little tiny bit of water in each of the depressions. And then I'm going to mix up some dye and um, use the dropper to drop them in. But before I do that, I want to put this other one in and let it start working here. Okay, now, this is safe and really easy. Um, I'm using um, Botanical Colors liquid, uh, Aquarelle liquid natural dyes, and I'm using Lac and Saxon Blue. So a little bit goes a long way. And so I'm going to take a little bit of this Saxon Blue in a dropper, and I don't even need that much. I'm just going to drop in maybe two, three drops, and then I'm going to kind of 
gonna squish out. See how dark that is? I'm gonna squish out my my pipette. Rinse it in my water over here. Okay. Okay, and then the lac. I'm gonna do the same thing. Except then we're gonna put more drops in. So there's a method to my madness. We're going to do immersion after we do this little space dyed thing. And I'm going to combine these dyes together to make a violet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is drop some dye in every other one. Okay, and then I'm going to mush it around a little bit. Mix it up so it's it's in a little uh, little tiny dye bath there. Okay, now let's, let's rinse this out. So the Saxon blue is a natural dye and it's an acid dye and does not normally uh, dye cotton um, under any conditions. So this is pretty exciting that we can get this Saxon blue on the cotton. Now you can see because I have a little bit of water in um, in these depressions that it's starting to wick up a little bit. And if you did not have any water, then it would not wick, and you could have very distinct, um, basically pink, blue, and white sections. So it doesn't really need any more than that. Um, I'm going to put this aside for a minute and bring this over. And I can take this out already. Rinse it. And you can see hardly anything comes out in the water. And that was cold, uh, cold dye, cold water in the, in the depressions. And if I decided I wanted it a little bit darker, I could go ahead and put it back in. But I think actually I'll leave it. So um, let's just move on to the next to the next thing. Okay, at this point, um, I'm going to take my sliver that was soaking in the solution over here. Make sure it's good and saturated. Uh, squeeze it out again. out of there. Put it in the rinse water. Now I'm going to add this dye to this water over here. And I could add this to it as well. Okay, now let's put this in immersion. Now 
Now, I could just put a little bit in like this and pull it out and already it has color in it. So I could do gradations by putting some in for a short period of time, putting some in for a longer period of time, or I could just immerse the whole thing. And this is just barely warm water. So I could let that soak for a while. I could let it soak overnight if I wanted to. You could do this, uh, this dyeing in cold water. So, um, you know, it's safe as far as not needing heat, not needing any chemicals, using um, liquid dyes rather than powdered. And it's fast. Okay, so that's what it is after just a few seconds, really. It wasn't, I don't even think it was even a minute in there. So um, that's the easy way to do that. And as far as the um, the Everclear solution, I keep that in a in a bottle and I use it over and over and over again. And when it you know when it starts to um, well, when, when it starts to get used up, I just add more. So, let, let me just go ahead and take this out. You can see what it's like after, after a minute or two. Let me see if I can separate it here. There we go. And you can see the blue kind of overwhelms. That's why I wanted to put more of the lac in. And there we go. But you can see it's a different blue than the than the Saxon blue by itself. Now I don't want you to think that you're just going to get pastel colors uh, from these dyes and from the dilicious cotton. I only left the fiber in for a few minutes. So here are the pieces dried from uh, from yesterday, the, the blue um, and the, the space dyed. But I did another one where I left it in overnight. So these are the same, the same color, but just left a lot longer. And then at the end of the day, I put in six yards of, um, of sliver into what was left of the um, the immersion from these two and I got this pale lavender it took all of the blue and most of the pink uh, I put a piece of white paper down here so so you could see it but it didn't take all of the pink so there's some contention going on there between the the pink and the blue but you can use either time or temperature so uh, with the space dyed, you probably don't want to use temperature, but um, but time. I left it overnight, uh, and it's cold water, so you can do cold water and time, or you can do um, you can do hot water and you know much less time, maybe a half hour if you wanted to do something um, you know a darker darker color than this. So um, that's it. I think that's it in a nutshell. And I hope you enjoy it.